Hello YouTube, I Fix It All here, Team I Fix It All. Um, what we're looking at is the uh, rack system off of a super split. And the purpose of this video is to solve splinters getting underneath your sled. Um, <clears throat> I need to rattle off a few random things here first, but... Um, yeah, I need to get this out first. Um, you'll see later on why I'm saying this, but this vertical block that does the ram for all the work done to push the wood into the wedge, this block, there is some serious engineering going on with how this is located. The back edge as it relates to the face of this let me check and see if i'm zoomed in i don't think i am nope i'm not i'm just really close um the back side of this block is there's a, about five or six millimeters of this steel work that drops into the face of this block It's kind of like a, and then when it's bolted together, it kind of Lego interlocks right here. I don't have it bolted down yet, so it's not a fair assessment. There we go. But you can't, it's stuck. It's, yeah, it's, it, it the, the back side of this block hits the front side of this sled. So, um, what I've done here is I've devised something that helps us um, avoid getting splinters underneath underneath this sled. You see what I'm doing right now? And this is just a piece of 25 thousandths sheet metal that I have snipped out and shaped. I have two Allen screws or cap screws with washers tightened all the way down. And then I've backed them off three quarters of one turn. That allows gravity to let this thing remain loose, but it also falls in front of your brass plate to close off the gap for any splinters to try to get underneath. This is just version one. But watch what happens. See that? So now, this thing can slide up and down the beam all at once. And there's a steel obstruction in the way of splinters. So hopefully they roll out of the way. Um, I don't really like this version 1 design, but I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to go assemble it on the super split and uh, get a look-see at it. But what I would... Um, I need to point something out. The two holes that I drilled, I screwed up. I had things backwards when I was doing my drilling. I I put so much thought into this, I actually knew that my bolts needed to be below center line of the face of this block. Because I knew that your material that you are going to use to scrape your I-beam, the material can't exceed the height of the thickness of the brass plate and the sled. In other words, your material can't exceed this height. Well, as you can see right now, I have a bunch of extra material here and wood's probably going to hit this and bend it over and all that. I can remedy that. I can drill me two new holes a little further inboard and lower. But I'm rolling with what I got for now and see how it does. 
But this is the basic concept of preventing splinters from getting underneath your uh, underneath your rack. Uh, those are uh, number eight screws, cap screws. They're about one inch long, and they're goobered up with a crap ton of Loctite. Again, I tightened them up, and then I backed them off about three quarters of a turn. That allows this little snowplow thingy here to uh, gravity, basically. It's always falling. And if it gets stuck, somehow the vibration of the machine should shake it back down again. So if anybody else is working on this issue, it's just a minor issue. It's really the the bane of our existence with the super split is splinters getting underneath this sled. And it's really minor until you get a splinter. And then you're up here beating the hell out of this with a sledgehammer or something to get the to get the rack to shoot back. So if anybody else is working on an idea on this, uh, my version two is most likely this may not survive very long, but uh, we shall see. I'll give you a follow up uh, after I split some wood here in a little bit. I'll do a second video part two on this. But uh, I think what I'm going to go with is where did it go? There it is. The ideal material that I want I want to use now that I've had more time working on this is a sawzall blade, and I don't want to have the snow plow aspect built into this. I just want it to gravity drop and slide along, and basically just follow the profile of the I beam. You know, it's 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 going to close off that minor. 150,000 gap that occurs often enough for us and it's the right height for me to cut this up drill a couple of mounting holes and let it just substitute the concept of this entire piece right here all right guys if anybody else is working on this and if any other super splitters out there are trying to solve this issue Let's all try to put intelligence into our video name, like Super Split Splinters, and then dash your channel name. Like this one will be Super Split Splinters dash I Fix It All version one. Uh, that way, other people have an easier time finding the solution. Um, I don't think Paul has invented anything yet to solve this problem. So, I don't know if he watches these or not, but if you're watching, Paul, here's uh, one idea. Again, guys, if you drill your holes and you're going to try to copycat something like this, find the center of the height of this, mark center, and then drill below the center. That way your excess material has more room above it and it doesn't exceed the height of this. What I've got going on right now is as this material wears out along the front edge, as it wears, as this wears out, it'll cause the metal to drop. My oval holes are demonstrating that I have the room for that to occur. If you simulate it wearing out right now, let's just... There you go. You see, as it wears out, I have less protrusion, less protruding ears here. All right, you guys enjoy. We shall see you. Bye.